ever stubbed your toe so hard that there were no swear words to describe your pain, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like and comment. The comment section is uh, internet famous, which is really weird because I think I'm pretty like, I don't know, straight laced. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. It's there. Go check it out. If you're looking to support the channel, a couple ways to do that. The biggest one is Gun Mag Warehouse. They support us. We support them by buying magazines because they have a great price, except for Daniel. He sucks. Who works there? I'm just kidding. Daniel's great. If you guys are looking for ammunition, LAX ammo, or plaid with Vertex, 25% off Vertex with Grand Thumb or LAX ammunition. It's only like 6% though. Gentlemen, ladies, everyone else who wants to join us, today we're going to be talking about the Leupold Mark VI. As a quick note, um, a lot of people like to pronounce it Leupold Leopold or something weird. I don't know. Um, I'm really good friends with the people who work at Leupold, um, with all of them, and it is Leupold. But anyhow, my relationship with Leupold, um, straight up guys, I'm pretty honest about this, but I am really good buddies with the people at Leupold. Um, I like them quite a bit, we're friends, we hang out a lot, we get dinner together, uh, we hang out at shows, they bought me dinner before, so realize that that's coming into play. Now that being said, I think I'm still pretty straight-laced about how I review things, such as the LCO, which I absolutely hate from them. That being said, I love the Delta Point, and I also love the Mark VI that I'm about to talk about. But I just want you guys to be clear about my relationship with them, because I don't like to be convoluted about that type of information. So, those things being said, ammunition was provided for by LAX Ammunition, uh, Optic obviously by Leupold, and that's pretty much it. Okay, when it comes to the Mark VI, the Mark VI is a low-power variable optic. If you're not familiar with what that is... Um, is essentially a rifle scope that allows you go, to go from one power, very similar to like a red dot or some type of reflex sight, all the way through six power for the magnification. They are very useful and they're primarily used on ARs on lower caliber, rif lower caliber rifles. Now they are of course used on 308s and others, but typically for like the one to six, one to eight, it's about 308 and below. So with those things being said, let's get into this particular optic. So this optic is pretty standard as far as a lot of its features are concerned. Today we are going to be comparing it versus the Vortex E-Series, which is kind of a benchmark that I compare other optics against, not because this is the best optic, but rather because it does a lot of things well, and it's just right in the middle of the road for a pretty good price. So the other optic that we'll compare it with uh, frequently is the optic that I reviewed not too long ago, which was the Night Force Attacker 1 to 8. Now, I understand that the Attacker is a 1 to 8 as opposed to a 1 to 6. That being said, as far as glass quality um, and a couple other things, there's a lot of similarities, a lot of trade offs between them. So we'll be using those as a comparison because the Loophole is a very, very nice optic. And so directly comparing it against the Vortex could be a little bit. Um, unfair given that the Vortex typically goes for around 1300 or so, while as the Leupold, its street price is around 1900 to two grand. So with that being said, let's get into it. So first off, this is 10.3 inches long. That is very typical of low power variable optics. It's very similar in length to the Vortex. It's about the same exact length. Um, it is running a 34 millimeter tube as opposed to a um, 30 millimeter on the Vortex. So the 34 millimeter tube is going to allow for more light to get into the optic. And so you're going to see the benefit mostly when you're at the highest magnification level, in this case around 6 power, just as a quick note there. Moving through the optic right here at the very back, we have our diopter adjustment, of course. And then forward of that, we have our ability to change our zoom, all right? So anywhere from 1 power to 6. So like many other optics, um, I prefer a scope ring. And so it is very easy to twist this. It is 180 degrees twist. So if you have weird long fingers, you can like reach your fingers around and do something weird and like twist it all the way with one stroke. For most people, we're gonna have to kind of short stroke it a little bit, even though I'm not a huge fan of short stroking. But um, it is very, very smooth. So the turn from one to six is just very easy to do. Uh, compare that to something like the Vortex. And it is a very stiff to the point where if you don't have a scope lever, it's going to be very difficult. So even with the scope lever, it still requires some force. And there are, of course, ways to make that less stiff, but um, I haven't done it to it yet. It just requires kind of dismantling the optic a little bit. But in any case, Loophole did a really good job making sure that that was really easy to rotate. Uh, rotate. Now, the problem I have with this is 
I think that all optics should include some type of scope lever. Night Force did a really good job of having a small integrated um, screw mount that you could put in a scope lever. That way you could have one or not have one and it just integrated right into the body. Loophole has one that goes on the outside of the optic um, and they don't include it with the optic. So that's kind of a problem for me given the price point of the Loophole. I really do feel that optic companies should start includes, including scope levers for low power variable optics. Now, as of this um, review, that is not the case for Loophole. So I kind of do count it against the Loophole, but um, that's kind of me nitpicking. Bye. There it is, 112. Okay, the zero. So the zero on the Loophole is pretty famous for being just wonderful. So people who do a lot more long range stuff than me will be able to say a lot more. 0.2 mil rads for its adjustment, which is perfect for one to six. Not as precise as the 0.1 mil rad with the Night Force, but that being said, the Night Force also went to eight power on its magnification scale as opposed to six. So given a six power, I do feel that the 0.2 mil rads is more than adequate for getting a appropriate and a precise zero. And I haven't had any troubles getting a good zero with this particular optic. Um, the turrets are very positive in their click. It's very easy to do everything that you need to. Um, again, no problems when it comes to this particular optic. On the left-hand side right here, you have the ability to adjust um, brightness levels. So the brightness settings are good. You have in-between areas where you can turn it off, and then you can click into the actual brightening. It goes from one to seven. Um, it is very bright. It is um, daylight bright for sure. It's very comparable to the Night Force Attacker as far as its brightness level. But comparing that to something like the Vortex E-Series, the HD Razer, Gen 2 and all that kind of stuff, um, it's not as bright. And that kind of comes down into how they uh, uh, project the illumination. So in the case of the Night Force and the Loophole Mark VI, they're illuminating the reticle itself. And so they're not going to get quite as bright as something like the Razor, which actually projects a red dot. Now, the difference between the Razor and the Mark VI is that the Razor is a second focal plane, while as the Loophole Mark VI is a first focal plane. So what is that? Well, focal plane refers to when I'm zooming in. So with the Loophole Mark VI, when I'm at one power, I can see the tiny little reticle at the very center of my, um, of my scope. And that is what's illuminated, it kind of looks like a dot. When I zoom in onto that, when I go from one to six power, that actually zooms in onto the reticle as well as, well as zooming in you know, my, uh, my eyesight right there so I can see what's going on. And so that reticle then becomes large. What's good about that is that when you, re when you zero your weapon, your zero is going to be good throughout the entire level of magnification because you're actually zooming in on the reticle itself. Now compare that to the vortex, which is a second focal plane. Your dope is only going to be good at whatever um, you know power you zero that optic at. So I don't find it nearly as useful at range as is the Mark VI. So yes, red dot brightness. This is very very bright, like aim point bright. But that being said, I find the first focal plane in the reticle of the Mark VI far more useful than I do the Vortex Razor. So let that be said. 0.97. What I really like about the Mark VI is its weight. It is a very lightweight optic. So the Night Force Attacker weighed around 21 ounces, which was awesome. Just a phenomenal weight for how much capability it had. The Vortex? E-Series weighs around 21 ounces as well. Still a heavy little guy. The Leupold Mark VI weighs in at around 17 ounces. That is very light, and that is precisely what I want to see from a 1 to 6 power optic. I can take the weight of the 1 to 8 being 21 ounces, but I cannot take the weight of the Vortex being 21 ounces. It seems very heavy given the capabilities. So Leupold is both lightweight and tough. In every way, it has been, it has been designed as a military optic to take that kind of abuse. And it is very, very tough. They've done a very good job of that. Okay, eye box. So Vortex is fairly famous for their very forgiving eye box. So how is the loopholes? It's actually very, very nice. So when you have it lined up correctly, and with the extended mount that I received from loophole, it is just perfect on an AR. So looking through it, it is very, very good. It's about 3.7 inches of eye relief, and it's very forgiving for firing from unconventional angles and that type of thing. Now, there is a problem that a lot of people like to talk about, and that is with the illumination and being able to see it when you're off-center. 
So with the illumination, if you get off center, you begin to lose the illumination. You lose that kind of dot. And so that does happen. Now that being said, along with losing that illumination, you also get a lot of scope shadow. So I do understand the concern. It's fairly common with optics that are in the first focal plane that have illumination. So to me, it's not really that much of an issue. It's just kind of a trade-off you get with having that first focal plane illumination versus having that second focal plane illumination that you get with the vortex. So you have to decide what's more important to you because a lot of people get really fixated with having a scope that is exactly like a red dot that they completely forget. Um, the beauty of the low power variable optic is in its ability to reach out very far and also work okay up close. So a lot of people focus on the vortex. They're like, man, it's just like a red dot. I can use it like a red dot. I'm like, well, if you really want a red dot, buy a red dot because this does not function as well at distance, in my opinion, due to its reticle and its construction as compared to the Mark VI or the Attacker from Night Force. So just, it, it kind of comes down to what you want. Just understand what you're using it for because if you're going to be using this optic primarily at one power, why get a low power variable optic at that point? Why not run like a EOTech or an aimpoint with a magnifier and kind of get somewhere in between if you don't, you know, if you're never using magnification. Just as a quick aside there. Now, along with the eye box, we have to talk field of view. So Vortex has an enormous field of, field of view of about 115 feet um, when you're at one power at 100 feet. So just massive, just wonderful, just great. That's one of the things a lot of people like about the Vortex. The Leupold Mark VI is, does not have as wide of a field of view. It's about 105 uh, feet at one power and 19.6 uh, or so feet at 100. So, and 19.6 at six power. So, you know, how bad is that? You know, how awful is it to have less of a field of view? Well, it comes down to a lot of things. Field of view is very important, but there's more to an optic than just the field of view. We have to look at the whole picture and everything because again, um, statistics, you know, stats on optics only tell us so much. So how does it look when we look through the optic? Because that is something that you can't exactly quantify um, through statistical, you know, through stats when you're looking at like optics planet. So the vortex glass is very, very good. However, the loophole glass is fairly world known for just being incredibly clear. And so in many ways, I can compare it to many high-end optics like Night Force and others that I haven't reviewed up to this point. Now, of course, there are many optics that beat it that cost a whole lot more, but the loophole very much so compares favorably with the Night Force. So what comes with that is excellent edge-to-edge -edge clarity. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop up a little video right here so you can see a comparison. So we have edge-to-edge -edge clarity, and by that I mean there's no bending at the edges or anything like that. We have high detail, high clarity, high contrast between everything, and we have no chromatic aberration. So if you're not familiar with what chromatic aberration is, on cheaper optics, you'll see it quite a bit. It's where the optic is not focusing all of the colors of light to one single point. So you begin to get a little bit of separation of that color. It's a fairly common um, phenomenon in optics. So to have a optic that doesn't exhibit it is awesome. Other optics that don't exhibit it would be like the Night Force and others that are out there that do really well. So yes, less field of view, and especially when zoomed in all the way, but compared to the Vortex, I find that the loophole, it's much easier to resolve what I'm looking at due to the phenomenal um, glass clarity and glass quality. Um, so I do prefer the loophole 1,000% more than the Vortex, and 1,000% is a thing. Seven. One, one, seven. So with all those things being said, what is it like at six power? At six power, the eye relief is very generous. The... Um, because of the 34 millimeter tube and the excellent glass, you get really good light transmission. So even when shooting in low light, I'm still able to resolve targets for quite a while before it gets too dark to the point where I can't see through the optic. So it does really well with that. Now, one power. This is what everyone gets really focused on. What does it look like at one power? So if we take a look at something like the excellent Vortex with its great one power, it's kind of like that benchmark again, it looks really good. But the Lupul Mark VI's one power is superior. And the reason for that is it is more flat of an image. When you're looking through an optic, oftentimes that you kind of get a little bit of bending at the edges. It doesn't look completely like you know, you're just looking at something with your eyes. 
You see that a lot more so with the Mark VI and other really high-end optics. So it's a really good 1x. And what that leads to is just ease when you're shooting this thing at 1x. It is very simple. Now, is it as easy as a red dot? No, of course not. Uh, shooting from unconventional positions is doable, but realize that when you're getting far off of that optic, you're not able to see through it due to eye relief because that is still a problem. With that being said, what is the reticle like at six power? Um, I am a huge fan of the reticle. The reticle is a CMRW. Um, it has a lot of really great features. I'm gonna go ahead and pop up a picture of it right here. So first off, um, the people at Leupold really know what they're doing. They have a lot of experience in making sure that they're making optics that are tuned to the use with which they'll be put. So this particular reticle is made to be used with 5.56 firing 62 grain, which is perfect at a 50 yard zero. These people literally know what I love. That is perfect for me. I zero almost all of my rifles at 50 yards. Um, they have wind holds up to 20 miles per hour and holdovers out to 900 meters. Now I do think that 900 meters is a little bit optimistic. Um, you know, I will say I have sh you know pushed this out to 700, 800. You can do it, but 900 um, is getting a little long for 5.56. But I do like that optimism, and I'm totally down with it. With all that being said, shooting through this at 1x is wonderful. It's easy to resolve targets. Tons of light transmission. The daylight brightness is perfect for putting it through its paces. I haven't had trouble with that washing out. And even if it does wash out, the great reticle design immediately draws your eye to the center so you can put the uh, reticle where you need to make your shots hit and be precise. At six power, the reticle has all the holdovers, all the perfect things that I need to make shots that count. So I've been a huge fan of the reticle. It's very comparable in many ways to the really excellent reticle that we got from Night Force. Uh, they're very similar in many ways and they're just as usable. So what does it come down to, gentlemen? Um, taking a look at this optic, um, it is phenomenal. It is perhaps one of the best one to six power optics that I have reviewed up to this point. In fact, right now it is my favorite. And I'm sure there will be better ones that come along in the future. But when it comes to one to six, it is lightweight, is very tough. It has phenomenal glass quality. It doesn't cost too much, around 1900 to two grand. That's right about the price it should be. And you absolutely do get performance increases over the Vortex Razor when you're paying that money. Because sometimes you're paying a whole lot more for not a whole lot more performance increase. I don't believe that to be the case with the Mark VI. I believe that you absolutely get that performance increase. And I have no doubt that if you were to choose the Mark VI, whether it be for duty, military use, competition use, plinking, that you will be absolutely happy with it. So. Go to SOAR, take a look through the Mark VI, take a look through some other low power variable optics if you're considering them, and see if it's for you, because I can't tell you if the optic is for you. But I can say, if you're, comp if you're considering a one to six power optic, that you'd be hard pressed to find a better one than this right here. So here's the thing, you could have you know the Mark VI, or the ATAC, or the Vortex, or Primary Arms, or whatever optic, but if you don't train, it doesn't matter. You know, you, The optic's not gonna make you good. It makes your life easier for sure, but a guy who puts, you know, 10,000 rounds through his rifle per year of hard training with a primary arms, you know, $300 optic is going to crush a guy who doesn't shoot at all with a Mark VI because training matters, right? It's the uh, rights that famous saying, it's definitely you, not the arrow. So get out there and get training, guys. Lots of great companies out there. We have Bear Solutions, Cogworks, Haley Strategic, um, who is run by Travis Haley, who definitely did not grow me in a tube in his basement. Um, we have Tony Cowden. Esoteric, Darcy, all these great dudes with tons of experience and you can learn from them. So get out there, get that training, get good, and actually do things. Gentlemen, thank you for watching. You cannot go wrong with the Mark VI. I fully support it. What more is there to say? Gentlemen, take care. I've got nothing else for you. All right, last thing for you. Drink water. Doc always told you to take a knee and drink water and you didn't. There is no substitute for fresh water. So go and drink water. Be hydrated. That will make you much happier in the long run. If you've gotten this far, you know we're going to talk about Big Daddy Unlimited. It is like Costco, but for the gun world, it's going to be worth it if you actually buy things because you have to pay to be able to get in, right, and get in there. Really unfortunate name, by the way. So anyhow, get in there. There's a link right below. Check it out. If you like it, cool. If you don't, then, you know, you're out you know, a couple blocks. No big deal. If you're all the way at the end, you're an ultra fan, and I want you to comment with your favorite rifle optic ever, any category, and go.